Hey, what's the reverse? Today we're going to talk about the 17-gallon mangrove tank stock list. At the moment, we have one single blueback, blue-eyed dwarf rainbow fish here. I do need more phosphate nitrate in this tank to feed the corals, macroalgae, as well as the mangrove. I've been dosing Chato Grove, but of course, I do also want to make sure I have a nice bio load in here to feed the other stuff. Enters my new addition, the African Blue Stripe pipefish. This is a fish that I have been hounding over for a long, long time. And finally, I was able to find Seahorse Savvy who actually kept to bred these fish. But before I tell you a little bit more about this cute little guy, I'm gonna do some work. This red macroalgae is a breeding ground for bubble algae. You see that within the spiny branches, I have all these bubble algae happening right here. But the good news is that besides this cluster right here, this tank is pretty much free of bubble algae except for like an odd rock, which I can easily pull out and remove all the bubble algae. Before we get to talk about the awesome African blue striped pipefish, I'm gonna do some work. Usually, I will go in with a little tweezer and kind of pull out all the bubble algae and then I'll do a water change and siphon out all the uh, bubble algae. But because of the uh, infestation, I figure I'll do a deep cleaning. Man, look at this Bristol worm. Good lord. Weapon of choice? Tweezer. Here's a closer look. Um, all these bubble algae among the branches. Man, look at these guys right here. But the good news is that this is pretty much the main cluster of bubble algae. They may, there may be random straggler like that, but that whole thing can just peel off. Everywhere else seems pretty clean, clean and clear, so we should be good. I just gotta keep up with this maintenance and then we should be good to go. All right, this is uh, pretty satisfying actually. It's peeling the bubble algae off. Nice. 2,000 years later. All right guys, change the plan as I start digging into this. Tweezers are just too slow. What I ended up doing is basically pulling each branch out and just kind of run my fingers down the branch and peel off all the bubble algae. Uh, that is going much faster and if there's any like really resilient ones, I just go in with my fingertips or fingernails or the tweezer to kind of pluck them out. Uh, of course, I try to pick off all the bristle worm first, make sure I don't get tagged. Uh, so far so good because there's not too much crevices for the bristle worms to hide so I can see them pretty clearly. And I can see why it's harboring so much bubble, bubble, bubble algae because it's really, there's like little notches. It's almost like those um, algae reactor. They have like those little plastic pieces of notches. I guess it's really easy for uh, macroalgae, in this case bubble algae, to kind of take hold of and grow from. One pair of pants later. All right, first bunch back in the tank. Second bunch right here. Here's a closer look. These bubble algae actually seems a little bit larger than the other one. So I think it would be easier to get them off. They'll just kind of like roll off probably. This is kind of like part of the end product from the two brushes. I recently used my finger to kind of pull out all the bubble algae. I saw it was a cup that was dipping everything in, but I just dumped it. Uh, in the process, I pulled out two pretty big and fat Bristol worm. I don't think it's large enough to really go after fish, to be honest, but they are fat and chunky. So just in case, I removed them. All right, guys, I'm really proud of the results. Just look at this. Um, I don't think I spotted any bubble algae left on the red macro after the scrubbing. Uh, the scrubbing was pretty painful, but uh, doable. I don't mind doing that maybe once a month to kind of like get rid of any traces of bubble algae in this tank. And it looks like our residential pipefish is happy as well. Uh, right now, the power head is a little bit faster. I think it's at about 45 or 50 percent power versus the uh, normal 15 uh, percent, where the pipefish can kind of cruise around. But what makes me even happier is that today this pack came. We got some apex pods as well as ticker pods. This is not my first rodeo, so we should be all right. This card is actually something that I really like uh, because it listed out a bunch of like common corals and inverse as well as different fish. And what kind of reef nutrition products would go well with them based on their micron size, micron being the measurements of size. Uh, in our case, we got pipefish and seahorse, let's see. So anything larger than roadie feeds would be good. So apex pod, ticker pods, which is what we got here, they'd be perfect. Excellent. All right, here we go. We actually got ice pack, but check this out. Haha, <laughs> first of all, nice. We got take a up to about who, and I know I need to open up the uh, sprouts. 
to let uh, oxygen in. And here we go, guys. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Reef Nutrition. They have been a fantastic supporter of the channel as well. Whether I'm trying to feed my corals, fish, inverts, or whether I'm trying to seed a new tank, chat from Reef Nutrition, always, always there to help me out. In this particular case, while the pipefish is hunting around for pots in the 17 gallon mangrove tank which should be large enough to sustain him and he also casually picks up frozen foods i feel like for his health and also just kind of enjoyment in terms of like picking live food i would like to add some more pots into the system and because of that i hit up chat of reef nutrition for uh, some starting culture of live pots and <laughs> he sent me more than that i want to try feeding the pipefish uh, frozen food or prepared food he also hooked me up with the arctic pot as well these should all be within the uh, proper food Food size for the pipefish who is kind of hanging out he knows what's coming so this is new look at this uh, beyond the usual packed bottle date which is like October 5th that's I think that actually that's when they ship it out so they pretty much just bottled it and shipped it out on the ticket pods they actually have this little notification here saying that they contain 50% more pods now can you guys see this <laughs> yeah that definitely looks like a lot of pods it's gonna like decimate my micro algae population in the mangrove tank, maybe. And look at the apex pod. Apex pod is a lot harder to see, but the density is insane. I feel like releasing all these guys into the tank may actually overload the system, but um, hopefully the pipefish is hungry. Little dude looks hungry. And arctic pod, we're gonna, of course, put in the fridge and kinda feed sparingly because we have all these live pods right now, but I do wanna make sure that the uh, pipefish is eating prepared food. At the moment, they kind, he kind of, uh, she kind of sneakers at the uh, frozen mysis that kind of passes by, but not aggressively going after it. So it's kind of like, but I want to make sure that she is on something prepared. Moments later. All right guys, so the bottle has warmed up to room temperature and you'll just see how much more active the ticker pods is now because the uh, bottles were shipped cold. Uh, that's why they were really slow. Now they're just seriously bouncing around. The apex pod's much, much smaller in Micron, uh, so Chances are you probably won't even see it on video, but in case you do, you can also see like the density of apex pods and how active they are. First up, we got the apex pods. Kind of releasing it kind of in front of the power heads and we'll rinse it a couple times to make sure to get a chance to really get pushed down to the bottom of the tank and make sure nothing is stuck to the bottle. And next up, we got a larger and much more visible ticker pots. And once again, I'm gonna pour it right in front of the power heads and you can kind of see them going in. And once again, I'll rinse the bottle to make sure no pot is left behind. And with the back background, you can really see the, uh, especially the ticker pots being blown around the water column. And oh man, look at the dwarf rainbow fish. You already can see her uh, picking off the pods. Again, live food, man, just like super nutritional. Can, can, you just cannot beat live food as good as like frozen or freeze dried is. And yes, oh, there it is. That was, that's another one. That's a visual on the pipefish actually picking off, I believe those are apex pods, those are tiny. That's another one. I think he's looking at the tiger pod and Tiger pot may even be too large for him. Wow, we got really, really small mouth. Yeah, it's really taking down the apex pot, but not so much the tiger pot, which I thought is interesting because the frozen mice is much larger than the uh, tiger pot. But then again, the frozen mice, he kind of just like take a bite and let it float off. It's not like you finished the entire thing. So I guess I could still really prefer the really small prey item that you can kind of finish in one pop, which are like the tiny pots, not even ticker pots, the apex ones, which is surprising because I thought the um, ticker pot would, the go -to, would be the go-to for this guy right here or this girl. But at the moment, she still seems to prefer the much smaller menu items. I think I got a lot of pots in this tank. I'm gonna keep going in terms of um, feeding frozen food so that one day she'll be um, comfortable enough to straight up tear up those frozen food, not just take a bite and let it pass by. That'll make life a lot easier. But for now, we got pots of the wazoos in this tank right here. Lots of pots. And I still got two bottles. 
crazy. On behalf of my tank inhabitants, thank you again to Chad of Reef Nutrition. Um, you feed my reef tanks. Thank you. With the live pots in the tank, the bubble algae all cleared from this rat macro algae, which took quite a bit, by the way. Let me give you a little background and a story on this uh, African blue striped pipefish. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I've been wanting one of these guys for a very long time. Uh, my inspiration came when I was like going to college at least like 15 years ago in Baltimore. There's an um, LFS called Aquarium Center. And they have a 16 gallon bio cube filled with zinnias like this. From wall to wall, not much rock work, just like front to back all zinnias and then just one really lively blue striped pipefish just like this well a little bit larger and it was really bold and it actually lived for a long time uh, at least a year i saw that set up so ever since then i've kept an eye out on uh, african blue stripes well even i've run into a blue striped pipefish i'll be a little nervous back then to actually get one because i would have like food blown mixed reef kind of like the uh, 45 gallon tank that i had and it was definitely no go for pipefish. So when it comes time to stock the mangrove tank again, I really paid attention to see if it was possible to find these kind of blue striped pipefish. And sure enough, one of my local LFS, well, I wouldn't call them LFS, they're a kind of really specialized uh, vendor on seahorses and pipefish called uh, Seahorse Savvy. Uh, they're in Maryland as well. Um, I saw that they have kept the bread blue stripe pie fish and that was like jackpot for me. So I reached out to Dom, these guys actually take uh, baby brine shrimp and also frozen mices. So be 100% transparent, I've tried feeding my girl frozen mices, uh, she casually picks at it, does not go after the frozen mices aggressively, probably because she is in an area uh, with a lot of live pods. So when you have like good live food, why would you even bother with like frozen food, right? So that's probably the reason because all the other ones that um, Seahorse Heavy have, they supposedly are weaned on to frozen food. So I'm not too worried about getting uh, Discord to accept frozen food eventually yeah. as needed. Right, oh, look, he want to feed her. A little bother to have this. Thank you. Choo, 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 choo. Here you go. Thanks. That said though, initially I actually got a pair of uh, this pipefish from Seahorse Savvy. I picked it up from the BWI airports. Uh, they were doing a shipment out there and I just met up with them and picked them up. Uh, sadly, the other one that was actually a little bit larger and a little bit more bold, um, he disappeared the next day midday. So he made it through the night in this tank, but the next day, next day midday, something happened or maybe it did not acclimate well. Um, he just perished and disappeared. I looked around the tank, did not find anything. So it was it was strange. It was obviously terrible for the fish, and also uh, I'm really upset by it. But I did not want to immediately uh, replace the fish or anything like that because I want to make sure this tank is okay. It's not something. Wrong with the tank uh, before I attempt another one. So that's why we only have one female right now. Um, she has been in this tank for two weeks. By the time you see this, uh, almost pushing three weeks now. And she has been doing fantastic. I really wish that the other male is still here. And by the way, you can tell the male and female by this now. I'm not sure if I can get any close-up shot. Hold on, let me see. One way to distinguish uh, with the gender of the pipefish is by looking at the snout. I can't really zoom in too close of this uh, point and shoot camera, but from what I understand is uh, we look at the snout. And if the snout is smooth, which appears to be what I have here, uh, that means this pipefish is female. Versus if the snout has like bombs and little ridges, then most likely that is a male. Um, and this again is thanks to Sean, who I really lean on these days for IDs and uh, uh, like scientific reef critters questions. Uh, thank you again for the help in terms of uh, identifying the gender. All right guys, and that is the introduction to the new tank mate that the uh, female dwarf rainbow fish has. Um, at the moment, I'm just kind of observing right now, pipefish, seahorses have always scared me. I always feel like they're kind of fragile, uh, even if they have like a species only tank. So I'm, but I'm cautiously optimistic in terms of uh, how this pipefish is doing because she has been just getting bolder and bolder and obviously feeding really well. But uh, I'm gonna give him some time, give her some time, make sure everything is okay before I try to introduce a uh, male uh, and try to form a pair one more time. Tank wise, tank is doing really well. I've cleaned out all the bubble algae, but I expect the bubble algae to come back at some point, which is fine. I'll just pull out the whole bunch of macro algae 
and just scrub it again. It was not terrible. I mean, it kind of sucks, but it's not terrible. It's totally doable. Um, the other dwarf rainbow fish is hanging in there, doing well, eating well, and uh, usually she just kind of like hang out up here. But before lights on and after the lights turn off, or right shortly before the turn actually the light turns off, she will kind of swim through the all column. In terms of water flow, um, I currently have it programmed so that overnight it's running at about like 2% just so it's spinning and no animal actually goes into the pump and um, in the morning I, it goes in the morning and late afternoon it's about like I think like 15% or so just a gentle breeze so that the pipefish can cruise all over the tank to hunt and uh, midday when uh, about like I think 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock or something like that I turn the pump up to about 50% just to kind of make sure I have like good nutrient transport and the traders get kicked up etc and that's when the pipefish kind of stays near this area and he actually stays around this area initially when he first enter a tank as well uh, because that area is lower flow so I think she feels a little bit more comfortable there and she'll just hunt uh, right there and at night is really interesting at night the pipefish always go right underneath the um, uh, XP aquas uh, some less ATO just she just kind of park right there and just chill and just sleep I guess so that's uh, this little girl in a nutshell and the tank has been doing well and you see that cluster of chados actually move uh, back up here from the 145 gallon tank because the 145 gallon tank is right now going through a half dose of um, vibrant treatment. I also added some emerald crab as well but that's a story for the next time. For now I will cap the story here. That is update on the mangrove tank and by the time you're watching this right now I'm actually celebrating um, Emily's, birth uh, Emily's birthday and we are probably in either Maine or Vermont right now and we're slowly making our way back home. Um, <laughs> so right now I'm probably like, my, my brain's probably fried from all the driving. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, leave a like. If you have kept the blue striped pipefish before, leave a comment, let me know. Um, I'm, I don't know a lot of pipefish keepers out there. So it'd be cool. It'd be really cool actually to connect with you guys. All right guys, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. shop, bye. Bottom line is that animal crab is still crab, and crab typically is pretty uh, opportunistic. I can't let me try that word again. <laughs>